Okay, so we're back doing our TDD kata for blackjack. And uh, actually, I'll, uh, I'll let me let you in on a little secret. I actually took a break. I've been doing back to back the videos. Um, but you should take a break every now and then and uh, clear your head. But now, where am I? Uh, this is a good point. You know, how do we get back into this? So let me start with uh, looking at my log. I'll do a one line. Let's see where we are. Okay, so we've done a setup, created a to do list. We had a failing test passing, clean, fail, pass, clean. And we've been doing numbers, it looks like. That helped me. All right. Now, also, if I come back into my test where I've left off everything, I see that I finished off numbers. Oh, okay. And we're on to multiple cards or tens. So I have a choice here. Okay. What do I want to work on next? Oh, I forgot to remove duplication and test. Let's go ahead and get rid of that now because I that was the issue I just solved down here. We could do a little more as I'm looking at this, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm sure it'll come back again later. So what's next? Uh, I could go to multiple cards, but that seems like a different issue than dealing with uh, tens or maybe even the initial ace or something. So I'm kind of thinking I should go to tens next. Um, so there's different philosophies about picking the next test. Ken Beck will tell you, pick the first test that isn't obvious, but you know you can do. And that will teach you something more about the system you're implementing. So um, I guess tens, uh, would that teach me more? Yeah, I have to figure out how to deal with that in add card or evaluate. Um, but it's kind of obvious too. This is a personal issue, right? Multiple cards, well, that's interesting because right now I only handle a single card. Uh, so it could be interesting about like, you know, how do I handle two cards? Um, I'm gonna go with the tens. I feel like that's the next thing. And again, you might make a different choice. You might choose this. And that sometimes will change the way your implementation turns out. But I'm gonna go ahead and go with tens next. And to represent that, I'm gonna go ahead and hoist that up in my to-do list so I know I'm working on tens at the top. I always like to work top down. So I grab that uh, test method and let's go ahead and put that in. Now the question is, should I do that? I'm gonna put that above because I think I'm getting more and more general. I don't know, I'm just gonna put it in front. Uh, there might be some good rule of thumb on where to place the next test, but I'm gonna put it there. At test, void test, uh, t is a. Awesome. Uh, okay, so, well, this test is uh, similar to these. I think I can reuse this, right? Sure, sure I can. Okay, cool. So let's reuse the same structure. Awesome, so all that hard work of, of making those, uh, you know, extracting out the common code, now makes this really easy to implement and very clear. Assert card is value, T is 10. Love it. Okay, so I saved it. This is still in continuous mode. On the left here, the test, let's see if it fails. Sure enough, it fails. Uh, expected 10, but was 36. Oh my goodness, okay. Uh, so we have a failing test, let us commit that. All right, so we have a failing test. E is 10. Done. All right. How are we going to fix it? Hmm. P is 10. So the problem is that when I added the card, it's getting saved. It's a char. And here's where I'm converting the char into an int. Uh, the problem is uh, the letter T is not a numeral. So by subtracting you know, all of the, the characters, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, they sit in the ASCII character set next to each other. But then, like, T is way out here, right? It's several characters, like punctuation and other alphabetic characters before T. So that's why we're getting this really high number, um, you know, 36, when we subtract off the, the ASCII value for zero from the ASCII value of T. So we should really need to handle T separately or specially. 
Uh, so maybe we should just add an if statement. Let's do that. So if we get to this part, and if we find that uh, the card, we don't even need this here. Just if the card um, is ten, is t. If that's the case, uh, let's just return ten. With that, and otherwise we'll do the number. Yeah, let's see if that works. Seems pretty straightforward. Save. Scroll to the bottom. It has ran the test and has decided it passes. Yay, we passed the test. Progress. So let's commit that. Pass. Remember, I have this long command line. This is staging it and this is committing it. So I keep reusing that same line and modifying the message, which is quite handy. It makes my life easy. Okay. Nice. We got a passing. Is it clean? Got some constants floating around. Uh, but it's not too bad. Uh, I'm starting to see some more duplication in my tests. I'm not sure I'm ready to clean that up yet. I could see a way of doing it, but I'm not sure I'm wanting to do that yet. Let's just, uh, let's put duplication in test question mark. It's starting to become a problem. Get rid of that um, comment. I don't need that anymore. Otherwise, I think this is pretty straightforward. All right, let's leave it. I'm happy. Make sure the tests are still passing. They are. Let's go ahead. Oh, it's running the test. Okay, now it's passed. And let's go ahead and hit uh, clean here. Done. By the way, that only worked because I made some change uh, in my code. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to stage and commit. Um, leaving that test, like if I back this out for a second, leaving the comment here gives me something at least one thing to clean up. So even when nothing else really needed to be cleaned up, that did, right? So uh, that allows me to stage and commit. So that's my little trick there. Okay, uh, so we're clean. And that ended that round. I guess I should end this video here then. All right, next time we'll do yet another round.